What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon Da Vinci, and I wanted to address one way that you can support the channel if that is something that you would like to do. We all need t-shirts, and if you happen to be in the market for a graphic tee anyway, why not check out my affiliation link at Tee Public? Here you will see different designs that I handpicked myself and new designs that will be added on a weekly basis. This week's featured item will be t-shirts themed after the IT crowd, which is currently a show that I'm doing reactions to on YouTube. So if you happen to be a fan of that show, feel free to come through and check it out. And I will be adding t-shirts, as I said, on a weekly basis. So be sure to look at it, not just once, not just twice, but on a weekly basis. Link to my Tee Public storefront will be in the description box down below. What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, today, we're going to be getting into another episode of uh, Casual Geographic. Um, before I go ahead and address that, obviously, the elephant in the room. It's been a minute since I've released a video. Uh, last week, there was a lot of issues as far as um, my internet. And then I had a, situ a situation towards the end of the week with my tooth. I had to get my tooth removed. And the beginning of the week i was pretty much in recovery so i wasn't able to record um, when i was able to uh, so i wasn't able to do anything until well today which is wednesday um, this should be coming out on thursday so i have a bit of um work i need to be doing i decided i was going to do a reaction and <laughs> we'll see how things go hopefully the internet issue has been resolved i will be doing a live stream on thursday uh, for Patreon. So if you are signed up to Patreon, come through. I will be doing live reactions. Um, so if you have a video that you like to see me react to, feel free to leave a link in the chat of the live stream and I will be taking care of it. In the meantime, I'll be doing a tier list on the uh, live stream in between videos. So that's something else that you can uh, check out and join me if you would like to. Um, if you're not signed up to my Patreon right now, I would currently suggest that you wait until the beginning of the month because the way I have it set up right now, it's going to charge you when you first sign up and it's going to charge you on the first of the month to avoid you getting charged twice very quickly. I would suggest waiting until the month ends and then signing up at the beginning of um, October. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and check this out. Um, obviously, Geography Now is one of these uh animal youtube channels that has become very important as far as like teaching you information about animals and giving you a, a fun spin on it so you have tier zoo which has their thing and then you have like brave wilderness which has their thing and now we have tears uh tier, now we have casual geographic that is doing its thing but anyway let's go ahead and jump into this and see what it has to offer if you ever see an elephant with this on its face you're probably going to die. That's because this I, elephant I know what is this must. is. Must yeah. is a time in a male elephant's life where his hormones go through the roof. That is how you spell it? Did not know that. Um, I was about to say musk, um, but yeah, must. Uh, it's like they start leaking something out of their temples. I'm not sure what's up with it or even if like that's a particular gland they have in that one spot because all the, the pictures I've seen of animals or elephants in must, it's always coming from like the same spot. So I... I don't know exactly what it is. All I know is it has something to do with their hormones and usually like around mating season or whatever, they get into that testosterone fueled aggression and they will mess you up. They will mess you up at. Anyway, let's go jump into it again. If you ever see an elephant with this on his face, you're probably going to die. That's because this elephant is in must. Must is the time in a male elephant's life where his hormones go through the roof causing a bull that is incredibly aggressive, extremely irritable, and horrendously horny. Basically, it turns him into 13,000 pound teenagers. And must cause his testosterone levels to shoot up 60 times higher than normal. Ooh, it also 60. causes him to smell like a mm. thousand goats in one room. Right now, scientists don't know what exactly causes must. I'm gonna that's assume that's a, a, it, a rather, rather large tail, for scientists to second for tail it has right there. Their history book. That stuff running down their face isn't sweat. It's a tar-like thing called taporin, which leaks from Tar-like. Which is why an elephant that looks like this is one of the most homicidal thing God allows to live. The reason is because female elephants are only in the mood once about every five years. Whenever there's a chance to get laid, all the male elephants in the area will start running fades with each other, sometimes to death. 
For about two weeks, they'll actively try to put each other out of commission just to have a shot. The bull elephants that lose and don't get a chance to mate will sometimes take out their anger by bullying baby elephants just to get their mother's attention. Mm. And in some parks with not enough females, bull elephants will go out of their way to CSI rhinos for no reason at all. Yeah, this actually happens. Elephants usually stay in must for about two to three months, which means- And Rhino was so traumatized, he just sat and took it. ...disrespectful living thing on the planet. There's being down bad, and there's death stroking a rhino that just wanted directions to the watering hole. Hmm. Oh, what the hell is this? There's literally no way this video isn't getting taken down. <laughs> well, if you're watching this, it means I haven't been banned yet. You probably want to know why this prolapsed anus has eyes. That is a soft shell turtle, specifically a Burmese peacock soft shell, found in Burma and Thailand. Yes, the same op from Gumball. And yeah, their shell is soft, yeah. flat, and kind of rubbery feeling. The reason for the soft shell is because a light, flexible shell helps them move faster through the water and the muddy bottom of lakes, and it even makes them faster on land. And because they were built for the water, they have long nostrils that work as a built-in snorkel. So looking like an uncircumcised trouser worm helps them breathe while still hiding in the water. And yes, turtles breathe air. I actually got into a legitimate argument about it last week. Like, bro had a degree in biomechanical engineering whatever and swore with his whole chest that turtles breathe water like fish. Anyway, this turtle's been around for 144 million years, making it older than flowering plants. But I mean, just because somebody it, knows, it'll, it'll, it'll pause in a second. Especially since the biggest threat... There we go. Just because somebody has the academic credentials don't mean that they're smart. Like That's something that we need to put to rest right now. Um, all this call to authority people like to do, it, it doesn't really mean anything if the person that is you that you're talking to doesn't know the proper ways of uh picking up information if they just think that they learned every somebody in the comment section said this they said that um i think they were quoting somebody i forgot exactly who but they said that a person that knows that they don't know anything tends to be the smartest person in the room the person that claims to already have the answers is the one that is uh, the fool because at least if you don't know the answers and you're open with yourself and will admit that you don't know the answers you're more likely to be open to learning and more likely to be open to um, having your opinion changed and usually when it comes to like people I've experienced the person that was convinced of something or somebody that had their mind changed about something tend to be more knowledgeable of that subject than someone that just believed it from from jump because usually it takes more scrutiny and uh critique uh the person that didn't know it ahead of time is going to critique it and uh, whatnot because it's going to be something that changes their mindset so they're going to put it through all the 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 hoops and hurdles before they actually like pick it up as something that they would know themselves. So yeah, I don't know why the hell I talked about that for so long. I'm sorry. Let's jump back into the video. <laughs> the turtles breathe water like fish. Anyway, this turtle has been around for 144 million years, making it older than flowering plants. But this foreskin with a face is endangered. So there's a chance its contract might not be renewed, especially since the biggest threat is just the Burmese traded in an East Asian food market, which I can't say I understand because it honestly looks like a third grade dick joke that somebody accidentally gave life. <laughs> Kind of. I can see how that can be nightmare inducing. Video, and a lot of y'all thought that was some kind of bat or a sugar glider. Someone even asked me if it was a horrifically deformed flying squirrel. But I personally don't think it's any of those. I think that Pokemon was a Kalugo, and if you don't know what that is, don't feel bad. Most of science doesn't either. They're called flying lemurs, but it turns out they're not lemurs. It looks a lot smaller than what was in the video. Lame. That weird cousin that only shows up to every fourth family reunion. So even though their closest relatives are primates like lemurs, gorillas, and, you know, us. This meth squirrel is basically mm. its own thing. And thanks to that stretchy membrane called a patagium, the Kalugo can glide for well over 650 feet between trees. Couldn't really tell where this video was from, but its flying identity crisis is found in the rainforest of Southeast Asia. There's two flavors of this furry kite. You got the Sunda flying lemur and the Philippines flying lemur. But I cannot stress this enough, they're not lemurs. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but it isn't a lemur. My best guess is somebody got in God's studio and tried to draw bats strictly from memory, and this was the outcome. Also, they're tiny vegans that eat leaves, shoots, sap, and fruit. By far, their biggest op is the Philippines Eagle, which claps them on an egregious level. But somehow, they're not endangered, so I guess this hammock puppy's doing something right. I'm gonna say some things, and it might upset people, but it has to be said. I really think Christopher Columbus <laughs> at least one manatee in his life. He <laughs> was at sea for, what, seven, eight, nine months, and... 
Okay, I think I know where this is coming from. I do believe that Christopher Columbus, during at some point during his sales, confused manatees to be mermaids. And my question is, what was his standard? I mean, well, let's be fair. We I don't think that it's established that Christopher Columbus thought mermaids were beautiful. I, I haven't seen anything like that. If somebody does have some knowledge of whether what his idea of what a mermaid was is if you have information on that let me know but even still i don't see how you could look at a manatee and think that that looks remotely human from any distance so it makes me question what type of people um christopher columbus was dating <laughs> like, like i'm dead serious like man must have been down bad it'll start in a second what he thought were three mermaids in the Dominican Republic were actually three West Indian manatees. I guess if you look at their skeleton, you can kind of see how no, that happened. you can't. Also, no. West Indian manatees can tip the scales at 1,300 pounds, so I'm guessing they were just really body positive back then. But not that positive, because Columbus actually wrote that he was disappointed that the mermaids weren't as beautiful as streets told him they would be, especially since their faces had too many masculine features. Okay. I mean, I guess. Like, disappointed doesn't mean he didn't see it through. So this last <laughs> fact... Dear God, apparently a manatee's <laughs> vegeta is more anatomically similar to that of humans than any other animal. I don't even know Didn't how many laws that. or manatees got violated for such a fact to exist. Could be cat, but I'm not finna research it because that's one list I do not need to be on. But when you put all the pieces together, if Christopher didn't pipe a manatee, an attempt was certainly made. Since manatees are too unbothered, it probably just let it happen. Columbus mm. didn't discover America, but he might have discovered Rule 34. He came, he saw, he conquered. Just not in that order. You really don't have to see it through, my boy. And now that I think about it, that llama story suddenly sounds a lot more real. God bless America. Mm. That's cute, really. It's adorable. But I bet I can find three animals that sound way worse. And just because, I'm going to make sure they're all from Australia. Number one, there's <laughs> because two types of course. people in the world. There's the innocent, there's those who know what this outback bush bear I know they sound like, like, on the outside, oh, you see or like they're real, like, they low guttural. You hear Satan's indigestion. Just in case at least one of you doesn't believe me. Yeah, that just sound like a burp. You know, sometimes I think if koalas lived anywhere but Australia, they wouldn't be so out of line. Number two is the blue penguin, also known as the fairy penguin. They're the smallest penguins in the world, and once a year they emerge from also the ocean and nest under people's homes. It's all fun and games until you find out what a penguin trying to pipe sounds like. It ain't sweet. And number three, I've personally slept in this house about a thousand times. I'm going to do it again. Y'all just going to have to be okay with it. Because I would forgive everything, like literally everything about the cassowary if they didn't sound like this. Sound like an office machine malfunctioning. Or are these the hot spring monkeys? First of all, these are Japanese macaques, and no other primate lives in a colder neighborhood, especially in the mountains. So they're like almost scary smart. For example, somebody once left a bunch of sweet potatoes on a Japanese beach, and one of the monkeys watched a woman wash her food in river water. The macaque said vet, and she started washing her food in the river water, and she would even dip the clean food in salty seawater just for taste. The rest of the monkeys watched her do this, and then copied her to the point where it was passed on from generation to generation. Hmm. That's basically what's happening here. Once in the 60s, during a freezing winter night, a female macaque named Takiwa saw a bunch of people relaxing in a hot spot. She said say less and she joined them and she just kept going back and just so as definition expect, of monkey see monkey do the saw her and copied her basically using the spring as a natural hot tub and today you can Except find they picked up the good qualities not only to stay warm <laughs> but to lower their stress level because self-care is essential so much so that in some places you can share a spring with a monkey just keep your phone in your bag because they will steal it yeah you won't be able to do anything about it moral of this video I don't have one but tell me this picture ain't vibes if you struggle with anxiety you and this animal actually no. have something in common this underwater unicorn is a narwhal, and as painfully shy introverts, they can get panic attacks so bad that it kills them. And it's all because they live in hell with mm. AC, so they have a naturally low heartbeat to avoid losing heat and to slow their metabolism. You actually would do the same thing. If you were to take a really cold shower, your heart would slow down and you would find yourself taking deep breaths because of something called the mammalian diving reflex. Which is why a narwhal's heart only beats about 10 times a minute. The problem is, when a narwhal is afraid or stressed, their heartbeat actually slows down even more. A scared narwhal's heart might beat only 3-4 to four times a minute. Which is bad. 
Because while the narwhal is freaking out and trying to swim away, its heart is doing the exact opposite of what you would want a heart to do. Which is why it is very possible for a narwhal to die from a panic attack. The good news is, narwhals aren't afraid of a whole lot of things. The bad news is, most are terrified of us, which makes it difficult to study them because just the sight of us can possibly send them into a panic. So if you have anxiety and you'd rather go shopping for your own casket and interact with people, maybe you're not weird. Maybe you're just a narwhal. Animals that you wouldn't believe were real if cameras didn't exist. This is real, and it's a musk deer. It's technically not even a real deer, and even though it has Dracula's teeth, it's a vegetarian that eats mostly lichen. This hell Bambi uses those tusks to fight and flex for- I have a question. The jackalope is an animal that has picked up enough mystique that it has become kind of like a, some people, like, it almost seems like it's like a cryptid in a way. But we know they exist. We've seen them. Or at least, like, we know what the reasoning behind them were. Why hasn't this creature become a cryptid? Like, this seems like something that somebody would, if they ever saw, would definitely turn into some type of legend. A vampire deer? Like, it, it writes itself. Somebody would have taken this animal and used the descriptions to create some type of crazy animal that goes around disguising itself like one of your uh, flock or one of your herd only to kill creatures under your nose without you suspecting that it was that thing. Like... I don't know. It just seems like it would write itself to me. Give it a minute. Females and the bigger the teeth, the more attractive they are to the lady deer. Basically, they use those fangs for the same reason normal deer use antlers. For running fades and finding females. They also mark their hood with musk and people... Is there any other reason? To use their That's all nature is. Why the... Wouldn't we? This is a stock-eyed flying proof that even evolution runs out of ideas. Its eyes are social distancing. Its glasses would need a passport. And like almost every questionable thing in nature, if you ever see something that doesn't make sense, it usually has something to do with getting laid. These hammerhead flies will size up and compare eye spans. Not even kidding, the males get into eye stalk measuring contests and whoever has the longest stalk has the best chance at pulling females. The only reason their eyes are in a long distance relationship is because the females have a really weird preference. And now we have the Saiga. I've watched not one second of it, but I can look at this and confidently say it looks like Star Wars, and I don't know what makes me say that. You can find the Saiga in places like Mongolia, but Mongolian there's only Avatar. about 50,000 of them left. That nose job helps them by filtering out the dust from the air that they breathe. In the winter, that nose heats up cold air before it gets to the lungs, keeping this Narnia donkey warm. It also makes them the cutest type of ugly. We gotta protect this Squidward pony yeah. at all costs. This little guy actually has Squidward pony. Eyes. This dude is a Tuatara and it's found in New Zealand. Which is really just Australia's nerf little brother. It's not even a lizard, it's the only living member of a family that was around 200 million years ago. Which basically makes it a walking fossil. Its third eye is on the top of its head and it's called the parietal eye. You can only really see it when they're babies because when they're first born, there's a translucent part of their skull that makes it almost see-through. The third eye comes from a gland called the pineal body, which is attached to the brain. Even though it is an eye, they don't see out that eye the way we see through ours. Instead, the Tuatara uses that third eye to absorb ultraviolet rays and make vitamin D. They also use it to detect light because the Tuatara is nocturnal, meaning they're only active at night. Except for the babies, they're active during the day. But that's only because the adult Tuataras are cannibals that would put the hatchlings on a shirt if they got the chance. But if okay. they don't get turned into a pack, the Tuatar has a lifespan of about 60 years and some can even be around after 100 trips around the sun. Meaning if you get one as a pet, it could live long enough to be at your funeral. Absolutely nothing about this Jurassic reject makes sense. What am I but looking at right now? Only because they're cute. So apparently like it eats stuff. And so apparently like it, it, it eats stuff. <laughs> um, especially like its own kind. Now, when it comes to cannibalism, of course, there's no telling exactly... Um, well, there's definitely telling. There's a lot of animals out there that cannibalize, and it has definitely become like. Well, I said become. It's definitely like a thing, a thing, thing. Like it's 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 real. Before I go ahead and do that, I wanted to hit this like button. I wanted just everybody to see me hit this like button. Give it a second. It'll, it'll. There we go. There we go. See, I hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. That's all it takes. Um, but yeah, like I love watching nature videos. I love watching videos related to animals because it definitely gives you an idea of just how wacky it can get. Like sometimes you see videos like this and you don't really understand just how crazy the animal kingdom can get. Just how wacky a lot of creatures out there are. Because like we have this idea of animals and I guess because of how we how long we've been around, we kind of have an idea of what's out there, but there's always crazier. There's always crazier. If you want if you want to like 
play Mad Libs with the descriptions of animals, whatever you come up with, chances are there's an animal that reflects that, like 100%. And part of the fun is watching videos that discover these types of animals so that we can all sit back and laugh at just how wacky they they are. But um, like I said, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and share. I do look forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the comment section down below related to animals or related to uh, the channel, related to the video, anything. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Until then, I'm Devon Da Vinci. Give me the deuces and I'm signing out. Deuces.